So there's a secret in music you hear on TV, and I think it's because of this secret that I was able to land three placements with just one track on one episode of this TV show on Netflix. So let's talk about it. What's up? Clint Music here. I specialize in producing music for TV and film, and I teach other producers how to monetize their music by showing them how to produce, prepare, and pitch placement-ready music for TV as well. So if that's something that interests you, then stick around and hit that bell icon so you know exactly when that new content drops. So today I'm excited. I found out not too long ago that I had some music placed on season two of Young, Famous, and African on Netflix. So I had multiple tracks placed throughout the season. I also worked on music for this show on the first season as well, which was pretty exciting, especially with it being, I believe, is the first African reality TV show on Netflix. So pretty cool opportunity to, you know, to produce music for this show. And then it was super cool to come back around season two and find out I have even more music plays throughout the season. But episode one, I heard some familiar music right away it's crazy because you you know immediately when it's something that you've created so right kicking off in, in episode one i noticed a track that was used and then as i continued to watch episode one i noticed the same track come back but it was a different part of the track and then i kept watching episode one and then the track came back and they used a different part so i was just like okay there's something to this track that you know keeps editors going back and pulling it and pulling different sections from it and i'm going to open up my session i'm going to actually break it down for you so you can see you know exactly how i structured this track and some of the things i put in there that i think aided in this track being used so many times on just one episode and i think they used it some more on like one of the other episodes along with some other tracks but it's pretty cool so i want to break that down and show you all exactly you know what what this joint looks like so if if you're on netflix you can check this show out um yourself you can you know i don't know check out the episode see if you can find the music that we're going to kind of break down today i think that'll be kind of fun i was going to show exactly where the music was used but i was like yo that'll, that'll take the fun out of it why don't you watch it and then come back to this video and leave a comment and let me know where you heard this particular track in episode one, season two of Young, Famous and African. I think it'd be kind of fun. So let's dig into the track, man. So this is the session. This is the, the version of the session. That's like everything is just bounced out in, in audio. You can even see I, I still have my notes. The, the last round of revisions in here, which is pretty interesting as well let me see could we have a short riser leading up to the first note could we try so we we didn't even have like I, mean, I don't even think this track had like a legit intro like we were just getting straight into it it was really exciting working with this particular team as well because they were musicians composers so it was really easy to go back and forth and communicate because we spoke the same language can we try a one bar pause at 46 seconds this will work well as an edit point some subtle percussion could really help to maintain the drive, fill space and mix, could introduce some. So, yeah, like a bunch of different notes. You can just sit here and read this stuff. You know, this is a part of the process when you're creating music for TV. Sometimes you can send in a track and then they're like, OK, boom, it's good as is. But when you're kind of crafting a, a production music album, there is a potential to do multiple rounds of revisions and notes. And this is what some of those notes look like when you're communicating back and forth with, you know, the publishers and, and editors and things like that so that's pretty cool to see so this is the session so let's let's play it i'm gonna play it from the top so you can kind of hear it and then i'll kind of go into the the parts that that really stood out as far as what they were using in the actual show so let's play the track on all of these tracks this particular publisher wanted silence at the beginning so when they drug it into their dolls and, and things like that they didn't want any notes to cut off. So I'm literally playing this joint thinking like, yo, why don't I hear anything? So that's why. So we had a riser. We got straight into it. There's no intro. We're going straight into verse one. So here we go. I 
after those eight bars, we're doing something different. So right away, we have two sections that can easily be chopped up for an editor to transition from scene to scene on. And I think the secret with this track is that it has multiple stings, meaning this part right here. So that's kind of like a harder sting with the, the orchestral hit that I added in there. And then there's just that ringing out and then that moment of silence which is a clean edit point for for editors so we have that first one and then you kind of have this build up here which again is a great edit point so if you're going into a scene and you just want to come in you have your riser you have something kind of leading you into another uh, or the hook actually And then the second sting was right here. And that's a softer a, a softer sting. So depending on what's going on with the with the scene, you may want a harder one, you may want a soft one, but they have options, which is which is the whole point. So yeah, so technically you kind of have like three cues if they wanted to come in here. They have a cue with the 808 and like a some slightly different instrumentation going on. You have this uh this first part which is kind of sparse with just the string so that's one two three you have three cues right here that can be used in a tv show already and we're not even we're not even done with the track so so that's two so now let's pick up on this second verse So again, we're bringing that that sting back. Kind of went more dramatic on this one to kind of switch it up. Like you don't want your tracks to just get monotonous and just do the exact same thing at like just throughout the entire track. It gets boring, right? So this keeps it interesting. It gives them a little bit of ear candy. And that's how we kind of stung out on this one. Again, another great edit point. Like they could just use just this part right here to transition from a scene. That's it. So on this final hook, I kind of added another layer of instrumentation, which is these pads here. Just to give it a sense that, you know, the track is building more, it's kind of going somewhere I and mean, it's not just remaining the same, you know, as the first hook. And then again, we have another, you know, the final sting ending as it kind of builds up. Did something a little different with the drums here. <laughs> Keep it interesting. And then that's it. Like that's the, the final sting ending. So I think what, what really helped this track get placed multiple times on one episode was the fact that it had so many great edit points. And I want to shout out the team that I was working with on, on this particular project because they're the ones that even pushed me outside of, of my traditional structure and just really brought a different set of ears to it and expertise 
to add those additional clean stings and silence at the end because normally i don't leave a lot of silence in between like my verses and hooks and things like that so i think doing that and i think this is something i'll start to implement more in my instrumental cues is kind of adding that that silence just to create you know multiple cues in in one track and it just allows them to get the max amount of use out of this this particular track and yeah and then throughout the track we're just building like if if you want to you know see from scratch how i build a track from you know from zero to a hundred just from the ground up i have a video course that really breaks it down and i show you like why i'm doing certain things why i'm adding certain layers of instrumentation at certain spots why you know you know i'm, I'm just i'm making an intro a certain way or i'm how do i construct the sting ending that you keep hearing over and over again and why that's important so if you want information on that and you know see me walk through that from step by step just from the ground up then i'll leave a link in the description to my how to structure instrumentals for tv course um that'll break down everything and i'll leave that link in the comments as well so you can check that out and that'll really give you you know more detailed look because like i don't want to <laughs> go into detail on every little every little thing i added in this track and why in this video this is really just to show you the track that was used on on this particular show young famous and african and why i think it it worked so well i haven't watched like the rest of the season so i don't know if they continue to use this a lot of times once they they pull a track sometimes they'll just continue to place that track over and over but i do know there were at least two that i heard in, in like the first three episodes from the production music album that i worked on on this particular project that i heard on the show so that that's pretty cool so it's, it's probably some more sprinkled through there so that was exciting and you know another placement under the belt um and another opportunity to to create some some dope music for for a dope show based in based in, out of africa so that's it so i want you to uh, definitely go and watch the show is young famous and african season two episode one come back to this video and comment once you hear the tracks let me know you know which scene or timestamp or whatever you heard um, the tracks and see how many times you can actually hear it because they're using different parts throughout the episode so i think that'll be fun to kind of hunt for again i'll leave links to you know the how to structure instrumentals course for tv in the description and in the comments and then also if you're just starting out you're a producer and you know you just don't know the basics of sync licensing and trying to get your your music placed in tv and film like where do you start i created a free video tutorial for you for you to check out it's uh i get straight to the point there's no fluff it's like 11 minutes long like it don't take that long to explain an overview of the process so i'll leave a link to that as well in the description and in the comments so make sure you check out that free video tutorial for producers trying to get started in sync and that's it man if you guys want more content like this more breakdowns of placements i've gotten i've i've seen a few i kind of got on the list that i, I want to break down um let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see if you like this video and you thought it was helpful please be sure to like share and subscribe and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace